What's going on guys? It's Kuday here. So someone tweeted at a game designer designing mobile magics. Uh, so they obviously work for NetherRealm Studios. And it seems like because WB game support is usually not a good place to contact because they just copy and paste the same thing every single time. It doesn't matter if you cheated, doesn't matter if you didn't, you just get the same copy and pasted response. Now you can get all mad all you want, but those people who copy and paste those responses, they have no power to actually help you. I'm sorry, but W Game Support, most of those employees, they don't actually have the ability to help you. They need their manager's permission, so they just give the same copy and paste response unless there's a huge outrage and the developers, uh, or not developers, sorry, the managers there are like, hey, actually you need to give this person this because um, we said so because it's starting to become a problem and they actually need this and that's what happened with the fire god Liu king incident when people were not getting their fire god Liu kings back after the server maintenance um people were just being told here we'll give you one paid pack since you paid for one paid pack and then they wouldn't get fire god Liu king on their first paid pack where they got him on the first try or whatever and so after that the game devs would be like well, well sorry we, we can't add him to your account well some people just said, well, frick you. We know you can add him to, to the account. You just don't want to. You just want to be stubborn about it and try to like kind of pinch money pinch this. And so some people fought them on it. And since enough people fought them on it, the game devs actually would have to give the okay to the people who are basically uh, in charge of responding to those DMs. They gave them the permission to say, okay, yes, we've added Fire God Liu Kang to your account. So honestly, the only power that those people have is to just basically send it off to other people. So don't think that Debbie Game support is actually really going to help you in most cases. The first thing they're going to do is copy and paste a response, and if you try hard enough, maybe you might get a different altered response. But in the end, it's not ever going to be that helpful. You need to, like, you need to basically make a complaint about it on Twitter if you want to go anywhere, and you need to have a lot of support around it. Um, so let's talk about what happened. There's someone tweeted, and I already know that this person definitely did cheat. And what they said was they, they got banned and they tweeted at the um, MK Mobile game Twitter. Cactus Pack actually responded to them and told them that there was a clear violation of the TOS. So obviously this person cheated, guys. It's obvious this person cheated and they're just trying to basically get their main account unbanned um, and see if it, they can try to do it. And it's not going to work out. They're, it's not it's not going to go through. And so, you know, give up on that. But then someone tweeted at Cactus Pack and said, Hey, there are people spamming rewards for the Adenian Tower. And are they just going to get a warning after doing all of that? And you know what Cactus Pack said? He said, we just became aware, and those folks will not get off with a warning. Guys, I am highly suggesting you do not do that tower glitch. I know some people are like, well, I'm doing it on a new account, but I do not suggest you do that tower glitch because it seems like the game developers are not planning to warn people. They are planning to fully ban people. Now, what do I think about them banning people? The developers just don't want to patch anything, and that's really just the problem with MK Mobile is they don't patch anything, and nothing's ever going to get done. So, that's my whole theory on that. But let's get into the juicy stuff. So, the upcoming tower. What might it be? <laughs> the next tower is very well going to be Shi'ai Ryu Tower. Now, this is a prediction. This is not confirmed, not fact, and the reason why is because it's not set at a certain time to go off. So normally, whenever we um, can, you know, expect the new tower, we can see it, and we can see that it has a set time, and it's waiting to basically deploy. Just like the Adenian Tower, until update 3.3 actually happened, the Adenian Tower was not in the game files, so we couldn't actually see when it was coming. With Shi'ai Ryu Tower, it was in the server maintenance. Now, let's talk more about the server maintenance. The server maintenance was uh, back when 3.3 first came out. Obviously, there was a huge server maintenance. Everyone knows all about that. But there was a huge bug 
or not bug, more like this was just something that developers accidentally did where they enabled the ability to log in and everyone's accounts are reset. They all received 50,000 souls and it was basically testing ground. They enabled tons of stuff that was upcoming into Mortal Kombat. They enabled the Adenian Tower, they enabled the Black Dragon Tower, and it they happened to just enable the Shi'ai Ryu Tower. And that's very interesting to me, that they enabled the, the Shi'ai Ryu Tower. It was right after the Adenian Tower, inside like the, you know, scheduled stuff. Now, if we're saying uh, everything in that um, upcoming or whatever, it was server maintenance glitch. If we're saying all that stuff was fake, well, here's the thing though, not all that stuff was fake. The classic ninja pack did come out. The elite netherrealm elder god pack, it did come out. All the soul packs that were in there were actually released shortly after. And the paid packs as well that were shown off to come up, they actually did come out as well. So it's very well likely that the Shi'ai Ryu Tower could actually be coming out very soon and it might be the next tower. And if it's not Shi'ai Ryu, then we're going to get a new tower. But we can't say that yet because it's only September 3rd. They really only start putting a set release date for these towers inside the game towards the end, like very end. Like we're talking like a couple days left before the new tower, um, or not new tower, more like until the, the tower ends. And the thing about the Shia Ryu Tower that was in the game, it's not new. It's the same old, same old, which I find very interesting. Are they really going to release the same old, same old tower? I know I've said that they shouldn't do that, and they didn't, and I already proved that for the Black Dragon Tower. A new tower did come out, and I was 100% right that the, the people leaking Shia Ryu Tower were just lying to get views. It's just really interesting to me to see that that way, um, to see that the Shia Ryu Tower might actually be used... Uh, without actually making any changes to it. Now then let's talk about the upcoming packs. Now this is where the video starts to get kind of depressing. So we already know what happened on Memorial Day. We already know what happened on the anniversary of Mortal Kombat. And we already know about a lot of the stuff that happened in Mortal Kombat recently. And we know that the marketing team in this game is taking the approach of giving the absolute biggest middle finger to their player base as they can instead of actually improving the game and giving a, a choice for free to play to max out teams. And they haven't even dropped a discounted pack ever since the anniversary of Mortal Kombat. And the, the discounted pack they dropped wasn't even like that good. Like... The, the Strike Force pack is great. The pack itself being discounted, it wasn't that great. And the worst of all was that the pack being discounted, uh, like, it shouldn't have been Strike Force. That should have just been a normal pack. It shouldn't have been a pack that was even taken into high regards in that way. The Strike Force pack should be very common because it's a very good team for free to play. Yet that's what they know. They know it's a good team for free to play. So you know what they're going to do, right? They put it in paid packs 10% chance for all three characters for $20. And we know that this is why they aren't dropping those paid packs because they know that they can milk their fan base and they know they can give the biggest middle finger they absolutely can. Uh, and it's not that the game devs. I, I hate it when people say the game devs are ruining this game. We already know that's not true. We already know that this is the marketing team uh, in the team of people who actually decide what paid packs are coming in Mortal Kombat. They are the people who are pretty much screwing this whole game over. They know that there's a lot of profits to be made in this game, and that's what they're just going to keep doing. Um, and so, because of Friday the 13th, it is very well possible that we get nothing on Labor Day. And most importantly, they have a Freddy and Jason pack that is $10 each. $10 for a 10% chance. We know that they aren't going to be making any sort of soul packs available at the time. And I'm sorry, guys. I used to have faith that they might make a soul pack available um, when the Halloween uh, comes around, uh, but it's probably not going to happen. Remember, they they hold they held their ground for a seven year old character that came out in a time when Mortal Kombat actually cared about free to play. They they actually did hold the one thousand dollar max out price for Slasher Jason. They think that they are owed. $700 for like maxing out a character that is 
seven years old. Uh, so I said 700, I said thousand. My bad. It's about $700 to max out uh, Slasher Jason. So they really do think that he is worth $700. And I just cannot believe that. Like, that character is so old. And just like, how? How is he worth $700? I don't get it. Who's paying that? So anyways, guys, that is going to wrap up this video. We're going to end off on a pretty bad note. Uh, there is no real hard news for Mortal Kombat because we're at a time right now where there is nothing for us to know. And I know there's going to be some people who are going to be like, Oh, why? Why even make a video then? You, you wasted our time or whatever. But... Have I really wasted your time? Because where were you going to look? Someone who lies to you? Someone who tells you that something's coming that isn't? Um, and again, if you wanted to know what is going to happen, then I'd rather you know that it's not possible to find out the information than to keep looking over and over and over again and find nothing. So anyways, guys, that is going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys for watching. And yeah, hopefully we, the developers of this game can finally have a hold over it eventually sometime and the tower glitch is very well possibly going to cause a new ban wave that we've never seen before because legit people getting banned is is like possible but legit people getting banned and then having no recourse when the top joy ban wave happened they were unbanning people left and right and they were um not addressing it directly but they were unbanning people after a couple of days but this doesn't sound like anyone's going to get unbanned so legit players who have only taken advantage of this exploit are not going to see an unban it's very sad and i hope that the developers of this game do not let that go through because i don't think it's fair for a glitch that these game devs have caused and basically their laziness have let this you know stay around anyways guys that's gonna be for this video thank you guys for watching and yeah peace out